Okay, this video is about hash, hashing, um, <clears throat> hash tables, hash codes, and everything related to hash. Not the food, the, the programming way of um, using a hash function um, to take some value and convert it to within to a number within a range of values. And the reason a hash function is useful is if we can if we can convert a number or a value into a, <coughs> some number between say zero and ninety nine, then it becomes really easy to store that value, whatever it is, in something like an array. Right? Here we have an array that's goes way down there, zero to ninety nine. Right? So if we have some way of, for instance, taking a string, it's like Fred here, and converting it to a value uh, that is between 0 and 99 using a hash function, then we can store Fred at that position, uh, whatever it is, and then um, when we want to find out if Fred is in our list, and maybe do something with the information we have about Fred, then we can immediately find Fred in the list by hashing the string Fred again, and then using whatever number comes up to access the appropriate position in the array. Right? It's really quick. Uh, <clears throat> and um, works really well. So let's look at this in a little bit more detail. So if we'll start with Fred. So if we if we call this function calc string hash code pass in Fred, here's the function right here. So Fred comes in. What does this <coughs> what does this method do? Well we'll look at it in a little bit more detail in a while. But basically it it goes to the letters of Fred and calculates <clears throat> the, uh, the hash code. And this line right here, some percent 100, right, um, makes sure that whatever number is calculated within this loop is we're, we're taking only the part of that number that doesn't after we've pulled out all the 100s, right, whatever's left, that's the number that we <coughs> use to determine, that we use to store Fred in the list over here. So uh, some percent 100 means that our numbers will be limited to numbers between 0 and 99, which is exactly what we want for our list over here. So where is Fred actually stored? Let's go see. So our hash function would store Fred at position 85, right? And every name would be stored at a different position. So let's go up and <coughs> look at this again. We'll start with this part right here, char at index. So what this function does, it's a function of the string class. And what it allows us to do is, is isolate each character or char, right? Sometimes C H A R and sort of pronounce char instead of car or whatever. Uh, so the character at index. Well, index is going to be everything from zero to three as we go through Fred. Zero, one, two, three. So we're going to look at the four characters of Fred one at a time. And we're going to add those to this variable sum. <clears throat> so you're saying add characters. Well, how do you add a F and an R? Well, what we're really doing is adding their ASCII codes. So let's just take a second and look at the ASCII codes. <clears throat> so here's a table. You can find these on the internet by just Googling ASCII code. A uh, table of ASCII codes for the, the letters of uh, and symbols of English. And here's capital F, right, which is not as different from lowercase f. Capital F's code 
in decimal is 71. This is the binary code for 71, which is how it would actually be stored in, in the computer, a series of on and off switches, on being representing 1, 0, off. So that's what's actually in the computer, but this is what we like to deal with decimal numbers. So, sorry, I'm up one. So an F is a 70, decimal 70. Okay? So we're going to add 70, then 114 for lowercase r, then 101 for lowercase e, and then 100 for lowercase d. That's what's happening in that loop. So let's look at that. The ASCII, again, for capital F, for the character F is 70, R114, E101, D100. And if we sum those all up, we get 385. Then we do the modulo 100, which pulls out the 100s and leaves us with just 85, which is why Fred is stored at position 85 in this list. Okay. Just a reminder that what's actually stored in the memory locations, Fred isn't stored down at position 55. What's stored is a an address, a bunch of binary numbers, which is, which represent which is an address off in the computer's memory somewhere. So um, it's just a reminder that that's what's there. Now. On to hash maps. One of the things that can happen with a hash code, hash function, is that two different words could generate the same value, say 43, as they're from the hash function, and that leads to collisions, right? So we try to be putting two different things here. That's handled automatically, the collision problem is handled automatically in Java's hash map. Uh, class is something how to handle collisions is something we look at in AP computer science so at position 43 we have that address right which points to the key which in this case would, would <clears throat> be Fred and some value that's associated with Fred it might be a, a, a class of a person class which contains it holds additional information about each person that's stored in here. So the way you would actually do this with a hash map, assuming that the hash map is named response map, you would say response map dot put, in this case the word crash, and that's the key, right? So the crash with this example would we were assuming would evaluate to 43. The hash function for crash would evaluate to 43. So it would be stored in the 43 position in the array. And this second, after the comma, the second thing here is the value. Now here it's just a, a long string, but it, uh, remember that a string is a object in Java. So instead of <clears throat> a string, we could have an object that we're placing here. The first, the key, could also be an object. The value could be an object. In both cases, these are objects because strings are objects, but they could be different objects. Here's how you, response map would be declared. You would do new hash map, and inside the angle brackets, whatever type the f of object the first, the key is, in this case, strings, and whatever type of object the value is, in this case, a string in the parentheses at the end, because we're actually calling the uh, constructor for hash map. Okay? Now, collisions are handled by, by this object. If you inspect it, if you go and create a hash map and inspect it, this has a link, the ability to link to another key value uh, off this way. So the collisions are handled sort of by linking them together uh, off of this starting uh, position in the array. Don't want to get into that too much, but that's just uh, if you're curious, that's how collisions are handled. So let's just back up. 
Uh, oh, quickly, we didn't look at the find string. So it's, let's just look at that quickly. So say we were looking for Fred to see if Fred was in our list. We would pass Fred into this. We would call our calc string hash code function by passing Fred into it. This would return to us 45, or 85, sorry. This would return to us 85, given the example. And then we would say this whole list is called list. If list sub 85 equals Fred, we output string found at position 85. If Fred isn't in the list, because we hadn't put it there previously, it would output string not found at position code. So that's a overview of hash, of hashing, and an introduction to Java's hash maps. Thanks. Thanks for listening.